I'm damp and I'm pamp and we're damping and pamping. All right, what I'm talking, <laughs> what I'm talking about here is a really interesting thing within the body. Damp and pamp kind of sounds like a Dr. Seuss thing, but it's actually a really very sophisticated process in the body. DAMP stands for Damage Associated Molecular Pattern. PAMP stands for Pathogen Associated Molecular Pattern. Let me paint a clear picture for you in relationship to intermittent fasting. DAMP is all about your body recognizing that there is internal damage somewhere. Okay, if you have damage to tissue, it's going to cause a leakage of DNA or a leakage of particles into the bloodstream where your body is going to recognize that something's wrong. So it's gonna trigger inflammation. Let me give you just a simple example. You have uh, mitochondria where your body produces energy, okay, where you're just, it's the energy powerhouse within the cell. Okay, well if you are under stress or if you are eating the wrong kinds of foods or you're not practicing intermittent fasting enough and things like that, well what can happen is this mitochondria gets damaged. Now that comes in a whole, with a whole world of problems in and of itself, right? Damaged mitochondria is a damaged factory. You don't want damaged energy factories. But in addition to that, it has holes in it and it leaks its own DNA because yes, our mitochondria has its own DNA. And what that means is when you're not fasting and things like that, you're gonna have this leakage of DNA and that triggers damp because it's the job of damp to be damage associated molecular patterns. It notices damage to the tissue, so it signals the immune system. That DNA is not supposed to be here. We must have a problem. And why does this happen? Well, think about it. If you were to have a wound, if you were to slice your hand open or something like that, well, you would have just your own tissue, your own particles that would signal damp and it would trigger your immune system to fix that. Well, it's happening inside our bodies too. And this is one of the reasons we feel chronic inflammation. Okay, chronic inflammation is not something we like. It feels like we're running uphill all the time. It's not fun stuff. Now, if we have metabolic damage going on, we have a high degree of damp and when our immune system is activated. Consequently, we have inflammation. But we're gonna talk about PAMP too, because DAMP and PAMP work together. Hey, I almost forgot, please do hit that red subscribe button and then please hit the bell icon so you never ever miss our daily videos, okay? Now I'm gonna talk about ways that you can kind of mitigate this. Okay, the best way that you can mitigate DAMP is to do some intermittent fasting. Now, I shouldn't say the best way, okay, because I, I have to be realistic. There's probably other ways too, but my opinion on the best way is going to be to practice intermittent fasting. Why? Because you improve what's called mitochondrial density. You make the mitochondria stronger so your body can produce energy more. And thusly, one could argue that that's going to create less damp, less overall chronic inflammation. Now, when you look at other studies, you can see that inflammation gets modulated across different molecular pathways and different protein systems in the body, um, you know, via fasting. But I really wanted to just focus on damp and PAMP. Now let's jump over to PAMP for just a second, okay? PAMP is pathogen-associated molecular pattern. This is just like damp except instead of your body responding to its own tissue, its own DNA, and noticing an internal problem, it's responding to an external problem, okay? Like a bacteria coming in or something like that, right? Now, one of the biggest potential causes of PAMP within the body is going to be basically a breakdown of the barrier that protects our body from what's in our gut. Okay, now I've talked about this stuff before and it may seem like kind of just weird science and might be kind of boring, but let me make it a little bit cooler. Okay, our gut is supposed to be sealed up with a mucosal layer. Okay, and when that mucosal layer is weakened because of chronic inflammation, what happens is lipopolysaccharides, which are little guys that live inside of our gut and they live on the bacteria within our gut, they get a chance to leak into the body. When they leak into the bloodstream, it triggers PAMP because as far as the body's concerned, it is a pathogen. Okay, it is a pathogen because it's bacteria that's supposed to be in our gut, not in our bloodstream. So PAMP gets elevated. Well, you're probably starting to do the math here. Damp, because that's you know damage associated molecular pattern, that gets elevated with just inflammation from stress and poor diet. Well, then that inflammation affects our gut and affects our gut lining. Well, what happens then is then PAMP gets elevated. So we have damp and PAMP working together, causing this damp and PAMP in problem, right? Okay, so what else can we do? Like, how does this process work? Well, the best thing that we can really support the inflammatory process and make sure that we don't have too much 
uh, stuff leaking from the gut barrier is going to be by supporting our gut mucosal layer. Okay? Intermittent fasting has been shown to support that gut mucosal layer. Now there's other ways too, like collagen and stuff like that. And by the way, people do ask me like things that they can consume that are going to be really good for the gut mucosal layer. I would highly recommend uh, using bone broth. I put a link down below for kettle and fire. So if you want to get some bone broth, there's gelatin and there's collagen in bone broth, which has been shown in other studies to help contribute to a healthy gut lining and help support the gut. So I really do, I mean, as far as flavor goes and everything like that, they're my personal favorite, but I also put a link down below so you can get a special pricing on them. FYI, they are a huge supporter and sponsor of this channel. So I appreciate them dearly because they make all this content possible. So if you want to support this channel, best way to support this channel is to, well, support my sponsors. So please do check them out down below in the description. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Anyhow, let's watch the rest of the video first. So when we give ourselves more of that gut mucosal layer, then we're preventing those lipopolysaccharides from getting in the bloodstream and they remain contained where they should. Now there was something that was published in scientific reports that found that women that fasted or women that just went through typical caloric restriction, they had a massive improvement in their gut mucosal layer, but as a direct result of that, they had a big decrease in lipopolysaccharide content within their bloodstream, meaning their immune system wasn't having to work on fighting these lipopolysaccharides. So that's just one scientific report, okay? There's a lot of different things that show that intermittent fasting can play a big role there. We also have to look at inflammation as a whole and what's kind of happening, okay? Our immune system is a little bit underactive when we're fasting to begin with. So not only do we potentially lessen the signaling system, the damp and PAMP, we're also lessening their effectiveness. And I've talked about this in multiple videos, but we do want to reduce the immune system's effectiveness when we're talking about chronic inflammation, but we don't necessarily want to reduce the effectiveness when we are talking about uh, acute immune response, and we want to actually be able to protect ourselves from uh, any kind of pathogen or virus or whatever, right? You just want to make sure that you're careful there. Too much fasting can actually compromise the immune system by crushing it too much. There's a delicate balance. We want to bring inflammation down just enough so that we don't have chronic inflammation, but we don't want to bring it down so much that we're basically affecting our immune system negatively. So what I would usually recommend is doing things like shorter term fasts, maybe slightly more frequently, or doing things like a even talked about before, bone broth fasts, where you're still having calories coming in, but you're getting that gut mucosal support and you're being able to provide your gut the restorative effect that it needs. But also just being able to keep the calories in so you're not going on super long extended fasts. You know, when you do break your fast, some of the things you're gonna really wanna be paying attention to. Definitely don't be having sugar coming in. Okay, sugar has been demonstrated to cause some issues with the, again, gut mucosal layer, but also triggering that leaky gut issue where the lipopolysaccharides leak in. We always think that leaky gut is just an overmarketed term, and it is, quite frankly. It's overmarketed and it's abused, but it's a real thing because it's in the scientific community. Those lipopolysaccharides are a real thing. So when you do break your fast, my recommendation would be to break your fast with like lean protein, break your fast, and then later on have some good healthy fats. Don't just introduce a ton of carbs into the mix right out the gate, especially sugar, because that could end up negating the entire effect of your fast as far as the gut goes, as far as that gut barrier goes. Remember, damp and pamp are good to some degree, but we don't want them constantly elevated. And if you end up going backwards because you increase your damp and you increase your PAMP because you break your fast wrong, then that could cause a myriad of other problems. I do have other videos on how to break a fast down below in the description as well. As always, do keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.